you've been trying to figure out what to use for your clear coat on your smoker, this podcast episode is for you. Hey, I'm Frank Cox. I'm the founder of SmokerBuilder.com, and I've been teaching people how to build smokers and use them for over 10 years. And on this episode of the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast, I'm replaying an excerpt from one of our live Q&As we do every month that was asked the question, what do I use for a clear coat on my smokers? So I go a little bit into clear coats here, but I tell you my actual secret, so make sure to pay attention. On this episode, get your notepad out. And uh, anyway, if you find anything that I may have missed or looked over or something that you use that you like, make sure to drop it in the comments and uh, tag me if you can. Um, anyway, give us a like and a thumbs up and a subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. And if you'd like to join in on one of those Q&A sessions that we have every month, click the link in the description to sign up and get the link when I send them out. So anyway, for now, enjoy the podcast and I look forward to seeing you on one of these calls. You're listening to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. So high temp clear, we used it a couple of times from, uh, gosh dang, what was the name of that thermal blah? I can't remember the name of the company. They sucked. I'll just tell you that. So it's not important that I remember their name. Um, It's a silicone based high temperature paint and uh, it's real splotchy. That was the only high temp paint I could find besides the VHT and the Krylon that you get at O'Reilly's um, that in the, in the spray cans, you know, I really tried hard. I actually got a hold of some higher ups at uh, VHT. They sold out to Krylon and that's what screwed it all up. So Krylon owns VHT now. One's a satin and one's a gloss. And both of those, I never really was happy with them. So Tom and I switched over to using just straight up linseed oil from the butcher, from the, like the Menards or Lowe's or whatever. You get it in a little, like I got a can over here, actually. Um, This cooker behind me is linseed oil. Um, I really got to like linseed oil on something. I just want to see the steel because if you, you put it on with the cooker being cold, don't heat it up, spray with a Windex bottle, wipe it with a towel, walk away keep it in a dust-free environment for um which is almost impossible in a welding shop you know i realize as i'm saying that but keep it in a a dust-free style environment for i don't know 24 48 hours and it literally gets hard now as you cook on it it does heat up and it does go away on the firebox um but this cooker behind me does still doesn't have any rust on it even though that happened um, you simply just reapply, you know, just show your customer how to put it on, just spray it, wipe it, let it dry. And it, it gets tacky and then it gets hard. And like right now I can't even like, it's just like clear coat on there. And you get that, you won't see the rust. There won't be no rust stick through. So if they want a rusty look, then you pretty much like a steampunk kind of rusty look. Some people want that patina. Um, you pretty much got to do clear coat. Um, Big Phil has having some luck with something. I don't really know what he's using. I think it's probably some, some kind of enamel kind of a thing from PPG. PPG seems to be the one like for auto body paint that makes a quart can of whatever kind of stuff that, that is good for auto body that, kind of hangs in there a little while with that 400 degree rating, but you will have to reapply on hot. PHT rep told me they had it in quart cans and I was like really working hard to get it. And uh, it never materialized. I I don't know what happened. They just, they said they have it on their website, but I, I never could actually buy it, you know? Um, But yeah, I'm colorblind. And so I have a terrible time with colors anyway. And uh, I can see like the differences in the sheen usually, but if you put like black and charcoal together or green and red or something like that, I'm screwed. So I was never allowed to paint. Um, But uh, painting is like the worst thing for a smoker, man. I just, I have such a hard time with it. Uh, I mean, we just freaking do black and we still have trouble, you know? I mean, I just don't know. 
So the best paint I ever used on a cooker was that Eastwood ceramic black. That stuff is awesome, but it is stupid expensive. And you got to mix a hardener with it when you paint it and your prep has to be perfect. Like you really got to do a good job on prep or you're going to have all kinds of little fish eyes or some kind of silliness in the, in the, in the finish. So typically what we try to, I was embracing the whole raw finish thing, leave the lead paint on the cooker, on the propane tank. I'm in, let's do that. <laughs> so, you know, make it popular, you know, see what happens. So. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Pitmaster Secrets podcast. Uh, once again, I'm Frank Cox. I'm the founder of Smoke and Builder. And uh, what I want to do is extend an invitation to you. If you're looking to get your smoker started, building your first one or your next one, if you have any questions or I can be of any assistance at all, please click the link in this description or just simply type in smokerbuilder.com. That'll take you to my website. And on that website, I'm going to get you started on whatever information you need to help you get your build, build done faster and easier than you can imagine. So anyway, go to smokerbuilder.com. Also, join in our community. And if you found this episode valuable, please like, or share with your friends, and subscribe to this channel. So anyway, I appreciate you. Until next time, keep your smoke pen and blue, and uh, we'll see you later.